This is my oldest son, Eric, when he was young. This is my next son, Mark. And this mm -hmm. is my daughter, Janice. Mm -hmm. And, and as, as they're progressively growing older, and where did you get these things? These are from frames. These are from the Tugmas, and this is from the Chester Poland. Mm -hmm. These are Rexy you've died. These are Rexy that I have gold on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, were they brass, bronze, or something? They're bronze. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure, here we go. Want to see Frank Scalley in there? You got to see Frank Scalley over here. This is my buddy, Frank Scalley. Oh, you're in all three books, eh? Yeah. Let's see. This is Frank Scalley. Frank Scalley and Joe Homan when we dove on the oh, right. uh, this, this Andrea Doria. Frank versus Joe. Is that you right there? That's Frank there. That's me. This is Frank. This here's Frank, and that's you. Right. This is on the Doria? This is on the Doria. Yeah. Kevin McMurray. Kevin McMurray. Yes, Kevin, yes. How many people have died in the Andrea Doria? Uh, quite a few. There's a dozen at least. And here's a dozen. Here's Bob Ballard. He wrote me up in his book. And then they had the 50 frogs over there. They put me on four pages on that. Wow. And uh, 50s frogs journal, underwater demolition team. That's right. <laughs> Not mundane things, odd things. <laughs> okay, here we go with this narrow passageway into the cellar. Yeah. We're going down below mm -hmm. decks. Below decks. Okay. We'll hang on to this railing here. Here we go. We'll have a little. This is quite a cellar. You've got a big cellar here, Joe. Oh, more this window one. frames. Here's the five marathons, Boston marathons that I ran. Oh, my. Five years in a row. Wow. What years were those? Those were from 1959 to 1963. How old were you then? Oh, probably about 24, 25. Good age. Yeah. I Did came you in go 50, faster and faster each time? I came in 51st. What? One year. You did? Yeah. That's great. Out of thousands. No, that was when the only about when the only about three or four hundred were running. So I didn't I mean, really got I'm not gonna, early. I don't want to embellish. <laughs> no, <it's laughs> don't go ahead, sorry. <laughs> oh well. Oh, yeah. These lights here are ones that I really uh, purchased at antique shows. Mm -hmm. But 95% of the stuff you see today was recovered by myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But lights are very difficult to recover because the uh, the uh, saw water takes an awful toll on them. Mm -hmm. Back on camera. Okay. Here's something unusual I want to show you, uh, Sam. It's, uh, it's what they call a pit. Oh, yes, that's for uh, splicing lines. That's for splicing line, and right. it's a very unusual one. This one here is very large. It came off the Kiowa, which is off, well, say off a of hull, uh -huh. Hull, Massachusetts. Yeah. It's made out of ligament vitae. Oh, that very dense wood. It sinks. Very dense wood. In fact, yeah. I recovered it in one of the bilges of the Kiowa, and I actually thought it was a projectile. Because it was yeah. all white. It looks like it. It's all you, white. You have to be careful to it wouldn't blow up. It had me worried for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and then a friend of mine, Bill Carter, told me, no, that's not a projector. That's uh, well, I saw it was wood. He said, no, it's a pit. Uh -huh. right. And it's made out of lignum vitae. No. They used this for the big haza mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They didn't have the uh, tensile strength that the uh, say that the nylon line has today, so yeah. to get the strength, they had to make them very large. Four or five inches was nothing in those days, mm -hmm. a big hemp line. Yeah. So to, to open up and splice them, you had to wiggle them yeah. and get in there to splice the hemp, yeah. the hemp line. So that's a yeah. very, very old piece. I think something about the lignum body, it also has lubricating properties. The oh, oil so Feel that, it's very smooth. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but it's been coated with some. Well, I, I coated with a little polyurethane. Mm -hmm. But I know they use lignum vitae in, 
has uh, sturdy bearings in the ship. And, they, and because they uh, have oil in them, lubricating it uh, makes a good bearing. They use one bearings right on the front right. of the chest. And, and grain. Right. Yeah. So here's some more. Uh, wow. Wow. Look at the size of those lobster claws. Yeah, that's a probably about a 15 or 16 pound lobster right here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can compare it with the hands. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's a huge lobster. Where'd you get that? Uh, I think we were on Situate. Uh-huh. And we're talking about ligament bitey. Here's some more ligament bitey. And that's from an old ship. That's an old ship, right. And they made those out of ligament bitey, too. Ligament bitey. I suppose because it wore so well. And perhaps also lubrication so you could the lines would slide right. through there. And there's a picture of Frank Scally and myself right here. Out at Graves Light. Well, well, and is that Frank with the lobster? That's Frank with the lobster. Boy, that's a big lobster. Look at that. Wow. What year do you think that was? Ah, uh, that goes way back. Louis Martin was working for National Geographic, and he was thinking of putting that into the National Geographic because they were doing a, an article on New England. Uh-huh. But yeah. it didn't make the grade, so... Was it? Like most articles, probably. Or lots of anyway. And here's some more. Boy, this is from the Vineyard Sound Lightship. Mm-hmm. Yes. This is from the Mojave. It's off of Hiding's Ledge. You dove there a number of times. I know that, uh, Sam. And these others are, well, they're just pictorial. These are uh, from a tug, the same tug. They're, they're not portholes. They call them deadlights. They don't, they they don't, don't have any hinges right. on them. Mm-hmm. There's another dead light right there. Oh, demolition. And who are these? Oh, here you go. Okay, this is the uh, uh, a schematic of the U-853. It's off of Block Island, Rhode Island. That's a German sub? That's a German sub. Mm-hmm. And this is the Black Point that was mm-hmm. sunk by the U-853. The top mm-hmm. deal hit it uh, aft and literally cut the whole stern of it right off. Mm-hmm. The stern and the bow are a half a mile apart. The mm-hmm. stern just kept steaming. Mm-hmm. I mean, kept the momentum kept it going. Oh, strange. And here's a real old picture of the Boston Sea Rovers. Mm-hmm. Point out some luminaries. That's Monkey. Here's the, uh, Don DeSantis. Mm-hmm. That's Joe Homan. That's Frank Scally. Ray O'Terry. Mike O'Neill, mm-hmm. Walter Feinberg, mm-hmm. Jerry O'Neill, Joe Lenahan in the back, yeah, totally. Robert Newbery, uh, Ed Hayes, yeah. Glenn Rain, mm-hmm. Kylie. Yeah. There's a couple I don't remember. Maybe they get that phone call. Uh, I can get it. Yeah. That's when I got married. Oh, no. Nice picture frame. <laughs> Each this is, is from the Pampas. This is off the Situate. Mm-hmm. And here are your uh, three children. There's my three children down at Disney World. Oh, my. Mickey Mouse ears. Yeah. Uh, Eric, Mark, and Janice. And there's Eric. Mm-hmm. There's Mark. And there's Janice. Mm-hmm. And there's one of Cousteau up here. It says, eat your heart out, Jack Cousteau. <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> Mother <laughs> Goose and Grim. Oh, my. That's, uh, that is a rather grim. <laughs> well, well. Now we come over here to more. This is the city of Salisbury. This was, uh, they call them the, the animal ship. It sank, sunk right off of the... Graves Light in Boston Harbor. Here's another big one of the Tempest. So this is about breaking apart here? This is breaking apart. It's on a ledge that, uh, in north of Graves Light, there's, a, there's an outcropping. And it hit that outcropping and uh, got hung up there and just the, the weather broke it all up. Mm-hmm. What's this one down here, Joe? Uh, that's another one of the Tempest. That's, that's an actual picture of the Tempest, Tempest mm-hmm. right there. Mm-hmm. That was a very good wreck. 
and then we come off a yacht down in St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. I left the coral on it to sure. show it. That's, a, that's the way they look when you get them. Right. This happens to be from the Ohio. That's, uh, this one here is from the Angela. That's a cement barge. Mm -hmm. And now we can go over here. One more. Ah. This is from the Tuck Mars. Mm -hmm. This was sucked off of Plymouth Mass. It's in about 135 feet of water. Mm -hmm. Good wreck. Mm -hmm. It's a good, good wreck. Yeah. This is the Kiowa, the one I was talking about with the ligament biting fins. Right, yeah. This is a very good wreck. This wreck. By the time it was uh, launched, it didn't even last a year. It sunk wow. off an Antasket. Mm -hmm. It hit a ledge in a fog and broke up. Mm -hmm. That was a shot in vibes. Yes, yep. like the Titanic. No yeah, way. that's right. So, <laughs> Another Titanic. <laughs> well, a little different. Very good analogy. <laughs> now, this car, uh, there's a photograph of it. And right it's, here, it's at the and dock is, in Mountain Avenue. And that is a porthole from the Kiowa. This is a porthole from the Kiowa. And that's the way it is with all these portholes. That's right. Now, here's the Yankee. This is off of Westport. This was sunk in 1908. Mm -hmm. And they refloated it. They tried to bring it again, and then it sunk again. And they said, forget it. And uh, this is a very nice porthole. It's uh, very heavy duty. I One time it had a blackout hatch on it. That came across here. I see. Doing but the they're, they're made out of steel. Most of the blackout hatches are made out of steel. So they rust away. Except I have one over here I'd like to show you. There's mm -hmm. a good story on it. It's a bronze blackout hatch. Mm -hmm. And here's a famous wreck, the Romance. This is north of uh, Graves, off in the Hot Mass. This so, hit a New York liner. Mm. New York to Boston? New York to Boston, and that it, uh, it sunk very rapidly. In fact, one of our members, Walter Feinberg, was on the ship going to New York. This was coming in. So he can remember them evacuating the romance over ladders. And there was a dog. A woman was trying to push a dog over the ladder. He told me this. And he says, everybody says, get that dog out of the way and let's get the people over here. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, well. <laughs> That's a 90 feet of water. Uh -huh. Many of the sea roads have built this. Yeah. It's a very, very productive. And How many wrecks do you think you've had done? Well, probably at least uh, 30 or 40, maybe. Seems like more of it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. I don't want to expound on that. <laughs> <laughs> but some wrecks you don't know the name of the wrecks because they've, uh, there might be yeah. several wrecks in the same area. Yeah, and they don't know which is which. Don't know which one's which. which. This blackout hatch comes from the, uh, the San Diego. It's the USS San Diego. It was sunk. In the First World War, off of Fire Island, New York City, mm -hmm. and no one knew really how it sunk. They thought it was hit by a German submarine torpedo, or a mine released from a, a German sub, because the subs used to release these mines. So for years, they contended that it was sunk by a German sub, but. Mm -hmm. The new president of the Soviet Union just released some records that the Russians got while overrunning Germany. A Russian, uh, no, a German spy sunk this before it even left port. port. They put a bomb on it, a time bomb on it. And when it was going out, it blew up. And for years, they never knew that. But this guy Putnam, he just, yeah. he just mm -hmm. released that information to uh -huh. the United States. After all these years. Isn't that interesting? No, I hadn't heard that. Yeah. It was in the paper. It was, uh, I was amazed. Let me see what we got over here. Oh. Uh, that porthole there is from the Stolta Galley. 
Stole three gallons. Stole the gallon. Got that shop in New York. Mm -hmm. That's you. At the wheel. This wheel happens to oh, come. that is the wheel. That, that wheel isn't from the Stole the Gallery. That wheel is from the uh, Fall Ohio, which sunk off of Gloucester. Went up on the rocks in Gloucester and beat itself to death. See, you got an engine telegraph. That engine telegraph came from the romance. In fact, I recovered both of them. Both sides of the. No, there was another one just going to this order. This friend of mine, Kenny Peck, who had been working on it, told me, he says, Joe, I did a lot of work on that, and then you come along and grab it. Well, I said, this was, you weren't even there, so I relented and I said, okay, I'll give you this. Just Throw me a couple other things, uh, some other way, and we'll, we'll make a deal. <laughs> so I, I gave him the uh, thing, and he gave me one of these lights over here. These lights, they came off of the romance, mm -hmm. these two lights. So he got the barrel of the swap, but that was all right. <laughs> sure. And here is a compass oh, yes. from the Tempest. Mm -hmm. And this this here is a hub of the Kiowa. So one of these. One of these. Mm -hmm. So you can you can imagine how big the wheel was. Oh my, that comparison, yeah. It's huge. Huge. You can see that wheel was recovered probably a week or two after the ship sunk. This recovered probably eighty or ninety years later, so there's nothing much left to it. It's just some all, some all the wood stubs are in there. Just the stub. Now there's a coating on here, isn't it? You shall have to I put that so it wouldn't turn green. Mm -hmm. What is that coating? Polyurethane or what? Polyurethane, yeah. Mm -hmm. And right here, I, I marked everything. It was built in 1903. It sunk 1226, 1903. The same day. The same day it was built? <laughs> the same year it was built at yeah, Sun. Same, same day, same year, right. And Joe Homer recovered it. Let me see. I gotta put my glasses on here. <laughs> In 1982. Mm -hmm. 1982 by Joe Homer. Yeah, I did the stamp. Uh, stamp. I do that to all the photos. Mm -hmm. I, I, so that they'll... Sure. I'm not gonna be around sure. forever, so... Oh, you might. <laughs> seal. I forget. Navy seal. That's what you are, among other things. This is a piece of copper sheeting from the Latchmont, sunk off of Rhode Island. Yep. It was sunk off of Rhode Island. You can see how they randomly nail it. The reason they nailed this to the hull is to stop the Torito worms from mm -hmm. eating out the wood. Because mm -hmm. the, the worms do a job on the wood. And that's, that uh, uh, was sunk uh, in 1907. And it was built in 18, this was built in 1885, this ship. So it's fairly old. What is this <clears throat> bicycle chain up there? That's part of the, uh, the, the uh, this goes from that engine on the telegraph there, as you can see. Oh, yes. Here we go. Oh, yes. There it is. There it is. Goes through pipes. It goes, goes down through, to the engine room. Goes through his pulleys. And I'm going to show you some of the pulleys over here. These oh, are all yes. different configurations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can see there's a single bore. You got a bore there. And it's all at different angles. So yeah. they, they, they. Sure. Those wires. This was done. Changed. Manually, this was done manually in the years years ago, but now it's done electronically, of course. Sure. So it's, uh, right. But everything but, was like hard wired. But the, <laughs> the mechanical ones work, even if they lost all the electrical That's right. power. That's correct. Okay. Here's an anchor. It came off of the mine sweeper grouse. It's mm -hmm. bronze. Mm -hmm. Very unusual to have a bronze angle, uh, anchor. Yeah. The reason it's bronze is because it's a non-ferrous metal, oh, yes, and the ferrous. mines will not be set off by it. Mm -hmm. so, and if you look closely here, 
it says U.S. Navy, 1954. Mm -hmm. Now, the Navy jettisoned this over the side when they tried to pull it off the dry salvages mm -hmm. in Rockwell. Yep. But they were unsuccessful. So it was U.S. Navy reservists that were up there, and you could see it from the shore. So it was like a thorn in the Navy's side. They said, we got to get that out of the way because everybody says, there's the U.S. Navy, mm -hmm. high and dry. <laughs> So what they did, they soaked, it was a wooden ship, so they sunk it, they soaked it down with gasoline and they got off to the side and they shot a berry pistol with a flare mm -hmm. and burned it. Mm -hmm. And of course all the local residents come out and had a field day with all the melted fitties. But uh, so this, this survived is because yeah. they, they wanted to lighten up the ship. So they jettisoned this and many other things over the side. So you went and picked them up? The I, went, uh, I went to pick them there, yeah. Well, what year did they burn the ship? Uh, let me see. Uh, that was probably in the late 60s. Uh -huh. I said in the late 60s. So you went there shortly after that? Yes. Yeah, it was a couple of days later because... Oh, right. Yeah, whoever got there first got the good yeah, pickings. Right. On, just on the stuff in the deep water. Anything that wasn't uh, underwater was taken by the local fishermen. Mm -hmm. Real quick. Mm -hmm. This, comes, this uh, particular plaque is from the Horatio Hall, and it has a nice date on it, 1898. Mm -hmm. And there's the Horatio Hall right there. And that central stack, that, that's the chimney coming up from the... That's correct, yeah. And this steam, steam engines, or yeah, must have had boilers? And, it had boilers, right, because yeah. this was a, a steam engine uh, plaque. An engine room plaque. Mm -hmm. And this came off of the Pollock Rip Slough Channel. This is off of Chatham. Mm -hmm. Very stiff current. I'm going to skip this a bit. Very swift current. Very swift current. Yeah. 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 So, what do you do in a case like that? Do you have a line? Well, we have to have a line, and yeah. make, I'll usually put an inflatable tire, and they, they tether that off maybe four or five hundred feet mm -hmm. so that if you do miss you can put yourself back in right, right. well they can put you in yeah number one right but you don't just go off into the distance no here's something i'm very proud of uh it's a picture of the death trap when i went through training in 1955 i was the first man ever to get across this i thought nothing of it but i went to a reunion in 1999, and found out I was the only guy that ever got across it. This is a wire, a ship this is ship. a wire, this is a wire here on the bottom, and a rope on the top. And if you look here, there's instructors here, and they have taglines on them. Yeah, and what they're doing, right there. they can jiggle at, but uh, shake it, to shake, shake your right shake arm. Shake your right so up. there's a rope and a wire, and you're holding on? You're holding on to the, the top of the rope, and your feet is on the wire. Uh, and uh, is there any motion? Are these on pulleys? Or well, is this static? Well, it's, it, the, the instructors su supply that motion. <laughs> <laughs> they they can go up and down. 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 They, they defy you to get across it. But you're the only, I'm only, the only one that ever, ever, ever got across it. <laughs> and they have one now. This is one in San Diego, California, but I consider it a cakewalk compared to this one. As you can see, not very far off the ground, mm -hmm. and you don't fall into water, you fall into mud. Mm -hmm. The shot drop. This is a good, good size drop here. It's about 15, 18 feet into the water. And as you're going across it, they're blowing you up. Blowing you up? Well, when I say blowing you up, they're blowing explosives up here. <laughs> Here's one picture down here where you can't even see the fellas going across. They're completely obliterated by the explosions. Oh my goodness. Anybody ever get hurt? Well, yeah, that's why I think they kind of modified it when they went to the West Coast. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow, what a story. What year was that, Joe? That was 1955. Oh, that's Sam. 1955, yeah. September, Friday afternoon. Got a lot of stuff. Still. This is a very interesting piece here. This is off of the Rhone. It was
was sunk in the British West Indies. Mm -hmm. It was a mail ship. It was built in 1865. Mm -hmm. So it's very old. This bottle says London, Islington, London, Webb's Double Soda, wow. and it says to Her Majesty. Mm -hmm. To Her Majesty. And this bottle was made so it won't stand up. Correct. Sam, on, Sam brought up a good point. The reason they do this, they're idiot proof it. There's a cork in here, and if you stood it up, the contents would come out of contact with the cork, and the cork would dry out, mm -hmm. and as a result, the contents would spoil. Mm -hmm. But this way, this bottle is very similar. It has an oval, yeah. right. and you have to set it there. This is the same wreck that they did the deep on mm -hmm. with Sam Waterman. Mm -hmm. And they made the four the same way, so they... It had to lie down. Correct. Couldn't stand That's up. Right. There's one upstairs there. Do you have any more? And, and, and four? Oh, uh, not down here, no. no I didn't recover it. Uh, Walter Feinberg gave me that one upstairs. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a, an old sea rover right here. Jerry O'Neill. Jerry O'Neill, there he is. And there's Joe Linehan. Yeah. And of course, we all had two hose regulators. Yeah. Really this particular piece here looks like a big, big porthole, but actually it isn't. It's uh, something off the, the drive shaft of this Liberty ship, the John Hate. And who's this? That's Joe Holman there, yeah. That's Joe Holman. <laughs> what do you know? Young, young Joe Holman. Yeah. Baby face. Baby <laughs> face, right. Oh, yeah, I'm changing the bit. There we go. <laughs> My face is, has, has started to rise. <laughs> Here's a nice piece off of the uh, romance. Let's come off the bow stem of the romance. Mm -hmm. And we have some stuff from the U-853. This is German stuff? This is from the German stuff. This came out of the Corning Tower. If you can imagine, the Germans were making plastic. And this has something to do with an antenna. It was actually coaxial. They were, they were into the coaxial thing. I don't know what they called it, coaxial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this, this come off with a death gun, three millimeter death gun. You have to look real hard here, Sam. That's a German eagle. Let me scan this again. Yeah, it is. Let me get right. Wow. Let me get right in here. <laughs> yep. Can you imagine this camera can focus this? And there's another thing. This came off of the. Uh, this was an insulator going to the wireless. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had quite a few of these on the the, the sub. Appears to be ceramic or glass. Yeah, there's some kind of a yes ceramic, right? Definitely. You know, this, this is another, another kid here, perhaps. That's another. That's a, actually a mom spike. That came out of the engine room, not in the engine room, but uh, just below the, the compartment below the deck gun. It had something to do with the uh, the elevation and mm -hmm. you know, when they were shooting the gun, it was some kind of a, like a little mini computer or something. Yeah, it does look like that. Yeah. Sort of a differential or something like that in the car. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's another dead eye. And this one here, I don't remember what the record came out. I have to look in the back. Yeah. Came off of a, an old work ship, I know that. It was a, uh, I, can't, I can't think of the name right off the top of me. But this is not very similar to this. It's a, it's a, it's a flat for the engine room. Mm -hmm. Joe, this is a fantastic collection. And this, uh, this, is a, this is a wolfish I caught up, uh, up in Rockport. They actually took a bite out of my wrist when I went. Really? There. You can't blame them. I stabbed them. What would you do if someone uh -huh. attacked me? <laughs> but luckily, 
I had a heavy glove on and I had a quarter inch suit, so he had to go through almost a half an inch of rubber. So I just got a little scratch. Not bad. These wolf fish have a carrot and scissors, and then they have two rows of crusher teeth. Oh my goodness. When I gutted it, oh. and we cooked it up, my mother cooked it up, and uh, it was pure white meat, very tasty. So the biting teeth are up here, and then the crusher teeth are back in the like, back. They they broke, they, just they, before the throat. So yeah, throat. just inside the mouth. Just wouldn't, on the wouldn't want to get their hand down in there. No, they're, they're very they're dangerous. Just, Even the fishermen, they'll bite right through rubber boots on a, on a fishing mm -hmm. pole. Mm -hmm. So they're very leery. And here's your shop. Oh, it is the wood shop, yeah. 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 A couple more photos over here. Mm -hmm. This is from the chest of Poland. This is a tanker. This is a tanker that split in half. Split in half around, around the, right about here. This gantry that they had, the, the crew could walk. Up uh, above the deck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had uh, quite a job getting this. This was in the, the port, port aft. I had to go down a staircase, go down a passageway, take a left, go down another passageway, take a right, and then go into the head. And when you're doing that in about, you know, 70 feet of water, it's kind of hairy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, what you won't do to <laughs> get a water off. So you're just breathing air, and you had to decompress on the way up? Yes. How long could you stay well, on the on the I stayed, I got it in two sections, you know, the, the 90 feet of water. So how long did you stay down? Well, we used to stay down about half an hour. Because we wouldn't be at, actually at 90 feet. 90 feet was mm -hmm. the bottom. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be always, sure. we'd always be above the bottom. Yeah. So we'd be diving between anywhere from, say, 60 to 70 feet. So you had 90 feet on the wreck. Yeah. You know, but 60 feet, you had actually 60 feet, 60 minutes. So you, you can spend a good deal, deal of time on the pole. But you'd have to decompress on the way up. Yeah, we always decompress just to mm -hmm. be sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful shop. You've got your tools are all wonderfully arranged. And I, uh, I do everything alphabetically. <laughs> so oh. that's half the job is finding uh, Oh, brushes, brushes, blades, eyelets. Let's open up one of these files. Oh, beautiful, Joe. Here, here, a little board and a, a nice little Joe press here. Look at these tools. Oh, nicely arranged. Here's a bunch of doors and this bell. This thing here is uh, something I salvaged out of the dump. This was a walkie diving. This was a walkie talkie at one time, like a magneto. And I use it as a continuity tester. As you can see, when you have a circuit, the bell rings. <laughs> when you don't have a circuit, nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joe, that's a big, yeah, that's I did that in 63. Boy, was that about 40 years ago? Or something like that. We're not getting any younger, yeah, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And here's a here's one of my uh, uh, chainsaws that uh, the clutch broke apart and actually broke the the drive shaft right off it. Sheared it up. It's very unusual for that to happen. Hmm. Let me see that fracture. Let's hold that just like that. Yeah. That didn't fracture. It is. It's a what happened? Torsion fracture. The the, yeah. the clutch, the clutch froze up actually uh, when it broke apart, and it jammed, and the piston was still going. It just mm -hmm. something had to give. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was either going to conk out, or I had it going full blast. So that was probably one of the reasons. Okay, Joe. So, and there's the uh, oh, there's another port. Oh, there's hole. another port hole. That's from Wally Gaudet's boat, the blue chip. Yes. So we had a lot of fun on Wally Gaudet's boat. Uh huh. That's very good. Yeah. Good guy. That's right. Great guy. He's Rest right. his soul. Yeah. So that's you with the, with this porthole, and there it is, the porthole. Right. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Well, Joe, I and the uh, the audience that might someday be watching this uh, video, thank you very much for this tour and congratulations on the uh, way you've got everything displayed here and your energy and dedication to uh, what you've been doing in making this collection and gathering all these. There's one more you might want to see. Yeah, okay. yeah this is the uh, Dixie sword. Oh, yes. I have to maneuver around the. That was sunk in 1942. That was actually a war loss. Oh. It was sunk by German subs off our I coast. think it, yeah, it floundered. Uh -huh. Of course, they weren't saying much during the Second World War. They, they tried to keep it. Even though we lost one year, I think it was 42, we lost 300 ships off the coast. Whew. We got murdered. Terrible. And here's another one of those portholes of the Angela, and it shows a picture of the Angela. Oops. It was all cement. And this porthole was recovered from inside the ship, in the middle of the ship. This actually wasn't, this was a viewing port to see the cement, how it was settling as they were pumping it out of there. Really? It could yeah, look it out. was a different type of port. Yeah, just an underwater port hole. Yeah. Yeah, so you could watch it being pumped. Yeah, it was in a, it was in a companion way. Mm -hmm. Well, and here's, whoops, there's something very odd too. Uh, that's a, oh. Uh, bronze? Uh, yes, it turned about the left hand thread and the right hand thread. Right, it's a bronze though. It's very yeah. unusual. That's right. That came off of Gray's light. Uh -huh. I don't know what ship it came off of. Yeah. yeah. A lot of times we don't realize uh, because there's more than one. More than one turnbuckle. You know, more than one ship that's more than one ship, so you don't know which one. <laughs> which one? Right. You know, so there is some lights. That came off of the uh, Minus for the food, I think. Yeah, that's what they're known for. Mm -hmm. Very few lights. Uh, uh, you know, unless you get the ship right away, the lights can deteriorate. Yeah. Particularly when they have different metals. It's very like good. Steel, steel and bronze or something. It's like a battery and makes the steel corrode. Very thin. Usually the outside of the, the lights are very thin. Mm -hmm. Or either steel or even uh, copper would deteriorate rapidly. Well, thank you. You're welcome, Thanks, Sam. Joe. And it was a pleasure having you down there. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. God bless you. God bless you. Okay, Joe. Bye. Okay. This is a Stuyvesant. This the Zinnia Stuyvesant. Peter Stuyvesant. That was, that was uh, alongside uh, Anthony's Pier Anthony's Four, Pier Four. And used as sort of a cocktail lounge. And here's one of the. Uh, the, the portholes that survived the clam shelling. The clam shelling. Well, what they did, when they, they couldn't raise it, they went through three companies trying to raise this, and they finally abandoned it. So all this superstructure was clam shelled out of there. Oh, with a big clam and shell. They just put it on a badge yeah. and took it out of there. In fact, it still lays right down there now. There's two boys marking it. Mm -hmm. So any, any the port, the portholes left? Well, I, I managed to scoop a few of them. After I did my regular job, I used to swim around <laughs> and help myself because there was just, there was nothing there. Anyway. So do you dove for Anthony for 23 years? 28 years. 28 years of diving and whatever he wanted. Though. Yes, whatever he has. He's, yeah. You know, inspections and there's a deck out there, the pilings. I found floating pilings there that he had to replace mm -hmm. because people were sitting on top of the decks. So. Mm -hmm.